Oh, we're filming. I didn't know we were live. Sorry about that. I was just messing around, checking out the camera, seeing how it works. But I'm glad you're here now. Um, I was thinking, you know, I don't have a whole lot of hair. So it gets very shiny to the camera. So that's probably too bright. So I thought I better wear a hat today. We'll see how it goes. It doesn't fit me very well. Anyway, I'm glad you're here for Kid Zone, our second Kid Zone online. <coughs> Excuse me. No, I do not have the coronavirus. I've missed seeing you guys. But this is the next best thing to meeting in person, is meeting online with you. I'm so glad you, you tuned in today. This is our second week of our Fear Busters series about how you can overcome your fears. And that's so important nowadays because we're all dealing with fears. It's so important. But first things first, remember last week, I talked about how we had a prize contest and we have a winner. And we will announce the winner at the end of the show today. So um, then we'll talk about the, this new contest that's coming up for next week. But let's get started with the song. I know it's not fun singing by yourself at home. I do it in the car, but um, but it's more fun when you have 70 kids singing. I know it is, and with me too. But you're really singing only to Jesus when we sing songs that we sing here at Kids Zone. So give it all you got, and we're going to start with Super Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful, and he's always there for us, no matter what we're going through. 
I love how songs can teach us things about Jesus and God. Today in our Bible story, a group of people were almost harmed. You will learn about a young girl who loved God so much that she was willing to risk her life to serve her people. We will also learn that sometimes in life, we will have to take risks and do what's right, even while we're still afraid. The girl I'm talking about, her name is Esther. She lived in a place called Persia, which today is called Iran. You probably have heard about that country. It's a country in the Middle East. Now, when Esther was a girl, her parents died. And so Esther's older cousin named Mordecai took care of her. Wasn't that great? They lived a regular life in Persia. But one day, ah, I'm not going to tell you the story. We can watch the story and see what happens to Esther and think about what she had to risk. So take a peek. It's time for a Bible story. A long time ago, there was a woman named Esther who lived in the land of Persia. Oh, that's where all those fancy rugs come from, right? (laughs) Yeah. Those are nice. Little pricey, though. God had an amazing plan for Esther's life. She would be remembered forever as a hero. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Super Esther. What does she do? Save the planet from a meteor? Nope. Did she rescue a million kittens from a tree? No. Did she carry a bomb out of Gotham City on the Batwing so everyone wouldn't blow up, but you're not sure for like five minutes if she made it or not? No, that's Batman. Come on. Right, right. Still gets me every time. Esther did something even more amazing than all of those things, and it sure took a lot of guts to do it. All right, lay it on me. What's the sitch? Well, first of all, Esther and her family were Jewish, which was kind of a big deal back then in Persia. Uh, what do you mean? Well, at the time, the Jewish people weren't really liked by the Persians. In fact, they had to live in exile, and they weren't treated very well at all. Yikes, that's no good. Esther was also an orphan, and she lived with her cousin Mordecai, who protected and raised her after her parents died. Sweet beard, bruh. Then one day, something happened that would change Esther's life big time. The king of Persia wanted to find a new wife, so he put on a huge beauty pageant, where the winner would become the queen. Wait, really? That's a pretty weird way to get hitched. Like, congratulations, you're the new Miss America, and we're married. Well, as weird as it may sound, that's what the king wanted to do, so that's what happened. Women from all over the kingdom were there, but there was only one that the king favored. Paula Dean. What? Yeah, think about it. He would eat like a king. Well, I mean, I guess he's already a king, but think about how awesome every meal would be. Breakfast, bacon. Lunch, biscuits and gravy. Dinner, butter bacon biscuits with a side of butter. Come on, Paula Dean wasn't around then. This happened like thousands of years ago. Esther was very beautiful, and God gave her favor in the king's eyes. So just like that, she won the pageant. Wait, so Esther became the queen of Persia? Yeah. Okay, that's cool and all, but didn't you say that Esther was Jewish and that, like, the Persians didn't like Jewish people? That's true, but the king didn't know that Esther was Jewish. She didn't want him to find out because she didn't know what would happen to her. So she kept it a secret and never brought it up. Okay, so like now she's the queen. Crazy. Is that it? No way. This is where the story really picks up. There's another guy that works for the king named Haman, and he's a pretty bad dude. He hates the Jewish people so much so that he actually brings an idea to the king that would be terrible to kill all of the Jewish people. Whoa, that's really rough. Like, surely the king doesn't go through with it, right? Actually, Haman gets the king to agree and sets the plan in motion. Wait, but if all the Jewish people are killed, that would be horrible. They're like God's chosen people, aren't they? And that's where Jesus would eventually come from. This can't happen. Somebody's got to do something. And that's where Esther comes in. She can't stand the thought of seeing her people get wiped out by Haman's awful plan, but she doesn't know what to do. I know what she should do. Time to lay down the law and tell the king not to do it. She probably kicked into mama bear mode and was all like, listen here, buddy. Uh, let me stop you right there. Keep in mind that this is like ancient Persia. You couldn't just approach the king whenever you wanted to, even if you had a reason. Anytime someone would just pop off to the king, they'd usually get a pop off themselves. Ah, gotcha. So I guess she's in a pretty tough spot, huh? Totally. 
On one hand, she didn't want to see her people destroyed, but on the other hand, she can't just walk up to the king and tell him what to do. Even the queen? Nope. Nobody could just walk up and talk to the king, period. Man, this is tough stuff. So, what'd she do? Even though her mind was filled with doubt and worry about what would happen to her, she had to do something. Esther knew that no matter what her feelings were telling her, she was a child of God. She knew that God loved her and that he had blessed her life and that if she stood up for God's people, that God would back her up. Yeah, that's right. You go, Esther. Esther trusted God and boldly went before the king. The nobles and the guards that surrounded him couldn't believe what they were seeing. Who did this woman think she was that she could just walk up to the king on her own? Oh man, I bet her feelings were totally freaking out. I'm sure she was feeling a lot of things. She asked the king if she could make a request and to everyone's surprise, the king wasn't upset. He didn't call for her to be taken away by the guards or thrown in jail, but instead he listened. Whew, that was intense. Okay, he's listening, time to land the plane. But she couldn't do it. What? She chickened out? Bummer. No, not exactly. She didn't want to come right out and tell the king everything, so she asked to have a banquet and planned to tell him there. Okay, so there's still a chance to save her people. Come on, Esther, you can do it. Later at the banquet, she went before the king with another request. All right, here we go. Showtime. But she was still too nervous. Goodness gracious, you weren't kidding when you said her feelings were freaking out. Totally. She was feeling all kinds of things, even questioning if the whole thing was a mistake. But her cousin Mordecai encouraged her and reminded her that what God says is more important than her fears and doubts. And he told her something that she would never forget. Esther, you were put here for such a time as this. Yeah, come on, Esther, you got this. Esther had dinner with the king again, and the moment came for her to ask her question. She took a deep breath, and she went for it. She pleaded with him not to go through with Haman's plan to kill the Jews. She finally told him that she was Jewish herself, and if Haman's plan goes through, that she would have to die too. Man, Esther is one tough cookie. What happened next? The king was moved by Esther's request and agreed to what she asked. He immediately got rid of Haman and canceled the plan to wipe out the Jewish people. Yeah, you did it, Esther. The king also gave all of Haman's wealth and property to Esther and Mordecai. Not only that, but the king signed a new decree to protect the Jewish people and keep them safe. The people of Israel were saved. Man, Esther is like a real life superhero. Move over, Wonder Woman. Esther can take you any day. Esther decided to put her trust in who God said she was more than what she felt. And because of that, her entire country was saved. The end. Wow. Wow. Can you imagine that? Esther had no idea that God would use her to save her people. But Esther was willing to be brave and courageous, and God used her to rescue his people from danger. Did you know that God is not looking for big, amazing superheroes? He's not. God is looking for people, both children and adults, who are willing to listen to him and obey him. Do you know what that means? It means that God can use you. That's right. You and you and you and you and even him back there with the sailor hat on. He wants us to obey him. All right. You know something that's very interesting about the book of Esther in the Bible? It is one of the only two books in the t entire Bible named after a woman. Here's another interesting fact. The book of Esther is the only one of two books in the Bible that does not mention God. Nowhere in this book will you find a mention of God. Can you believe it? Though God is unmentioned by name, he is evident, though, throughout the entire account. Why is that important to know? Well, sometimes in life, it may seem that God is nowhere to be found. We may think that he checked out and we are on our own. However, if we keep the faith and don't give in to fear, we will see that God hasn't left us for even one second. Did you know that God has a purpose for your life? God created you to do good things for him. God has placed you in your neighborhood, in your school, 
and in your family for a special reason, just as he placed Esther in the position of a queen. All around us, there are people that go through difficult times. We know that. We can see that. This virus has made things difficult for lots of people around the world and even right here in our community. Some of them don't know Jesus yet, so they don't have the hope and strength one needs to get through the hard times. That's why God placed you in their lives. God wants you to share his love with people you know. And I bet you know some people that don't know who God is or anything about Jesus, and you can share with them. Be sure to pray for the people in your family, your friends, and ask God to make their eyes and hearts open to the needs of other people. Ask God to give you courage to take risks and do what is right, no matter how hard it might be. And now it's time to play Would You Rather? Before we explore today's Bible story, we're going to play a little game called Would You Rather? I'm going to offer you two choices, so make a quick choice and say it out loud, okay? Let's start with an easy one. Would you rather eat M&Ms or Skittles? M&Ms or Skittles? All right, our second question is, would you rather never play another video game or never take a shower again? Which would you rather do? Would you rather wrestle an alligator or wrestle a bear? Would you rather never watch your favorite movie again or never listen to your favorite song again? Would you rather be covered in chicken feathers or covered in dog fur? That's a tricky one. Which one would you rather be, covered in chicken feathers or dog fur? Would you rather be able to fly or be able to become invisible? Would you rather be caught picking your nose on the big screen at a huge stadium? Or would you rather be caught picking your nose in front of all your friends in your classroom? And our last one, would you rather spend the rest of your life in a submarine? Or would you rather spend the rest of your life in a spaceship? Which one? All right. All right. Those good are job. good there questions. No right Makes you think. Answer. There's no right or wrong answer. But were some of those choices hard for you? Think about it. Which one? Which of those questions do you think was the very hardest for you to answer? Sometimes we get into situations where we have to make a choice. And it's not always easy. Sometimes one of the choices doesn't sound very fun. And there's lots of those in life. Sometimes one of the choices could be scary. Sometimes we really don't want to do either one, do we? Esther had a very difficult choice to make, and in the end, she decided she had to risk her own life to save God's whole family. Now, do you think that Esther was happy to make this choice? I don't think so. She probably hated being in this situation, but sometimes God has us in situations because he wants to use us to help others. None of us wants to be part of this whole coronavirus thing. We'd like to all be healthy and back at school or at work and doing everything we want to do. I want you back here. But the story of Esther teaches us that it takes courage to follow God, that we need to be brave no matter what we're going through. Do you think God wants you to be brave during the coronavirus outbreak? Yes, he does. And he has a plan for you, a plan to help your family out while you're at home. Maybe learn to be more obedient to your folks and nicer to your brothers and sisters. When we're stuck at home for a long time with our family, it may not be easy. But God wants us to be kind to one another, no matter what. That requires each of us to be brave and courageous together. All right, I have a great music video for you now. I want you to watch and about this is about being brave. We've never sung this before at KidZone. So it's okay to just sit and watch this time without singing. But you can sing along if you want. This is called You Make Me Brave.
song? It's perfect for our lesson today. No matter what scares you or makes you afraid, you can be brave because Jesus is always with you. Another great song that I know you do know is In the Eyes of the Storm. Let's sing it together. Sing it loud. Sing it strong. In the Eyes of the Storm. See the 
We're just about out of time for this week's Kids Zone Online. I'm going to post some questions for you and your family that you can talk about together this week about fear and being courageous. I hope you do. Take some time and share it with each other. Oh, almost forgot. I suppose you guys want to know who won the prize contest from last week. I was a little bit disappointed that we only received one entry, one picture. So we're able, only to able to give away one prize this week. And the winner is, drum roll. That's not a very good dumb drum roll. The winner is Riker Bear Color. Yay! Congratulations, Riker. You've won this very cool Lego pirate ship kit. I am so proud of you for helping around the house and feeding your bro little brother. That is so cool. I will connect with your mom on how we'll get your prize to you. That's terrific. And this is the Lego set that Riker won. Isn't that cool? It's got 310 pieces. I wish I could have it. It's a wrecked shrimp boat is what it is. It's pretty cool. And we could have given away two other cool kit Lego kits, but you didn't enter. You have to enter to win, kids. You have to enter to win. That was scary. <laughs> Talk about being scared. Anyway, this week's contest is that I want to hear what your favorite verse in the Bible is. Maybe you've got one memorized that you really like. Or maybe you can ask your mom or dad to help you find one that is a good verse for you. So then I want you to write it out on a piece of paper, decorate it, color it, use markers, glue pieces of paper on, sequences, what, however you want to do it. Be creative. Just make it really cool, okay? Then have your mom or dad take a snapshot of it and then send it to me at KidZone, and then we'll have some judges decide who's the winners for next week. We got those two Lego kits left. And I'll come up with something else. I got stuff here. No problem there. So, you have to enter to win. You can't win unless you enter. That was, that was scary. That was too close. Too close for me. I wouldn't want to be watching me that close. No. All right. So, this week, I want to make sure that you, you tell all your friends about Kids Own Online, okay? And have your fa families share this with other families, okay? We want as many kids as we can learning about how to overcome fear and the importance of having Jesus in their lives. All right. I want to close in prayer. So close your eyes. Bow your heads. Take off your hats. And let's pray together. Dear Jesus, I pray for each one of the kids watching right now. Please keep them safe. Keep them healthy as well as their whole family. Help us to enjoy the special time we get to spend with our family members. Jesus, please fill our hearts with courage and help us to be brave so that we will live out our faith even when it's uncomfortable or even dangerous. Thank you for always being with us no matter what we're going through. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right. Thanks for tuning in this week. Hey, I'm cool. Uh, see you next week. See you, kids. Bye.